Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing another uh, Resident Evil movie, the fifth in the franchise, with Retribution, an action horror film released in 2012 and starring Mila Jokovic, Sienna Gallori, and Michelle Rodriguez, and directed by again by Paul W. S. Anderson. Now my experience with this movie is I waited a few years when it came out to watch it because I was so disappointed with Afterlife. I just, I pretty much gave up on this franchise altogether. But then when I finally watched it, I was surprised at how much good they put in here, but it's mixed with bad. There, It's a balance. It's really, it really seems like they have really good ideas and real terrible ones, and they just mix them all together, and it almost suffers from first draft syndrome. So basically this movie starts off right after the events of Afterlife. It just continues right on. Alice gets captured by Umbrella and, uh, and put into their testing facility, which is controlled by the Red Queen and located in northern Russia under the ice. So there's very little means to escape. Jill Valentine is also working for Umbrella now that she has the scarab or spider on her chest controlling her. So Wesker tries to help Alice escape from the facility, sending in his assassin Ada and also a rescue team from the surface. So right off the bat I have to give this movie props for their opening scene. It plays in reverse and you get to see a bunch of action all in slow-mo in reverse while the title and the credits come up, the names of the actors and stuff, and then they eventually play it all forward and you get to see it all happening in real time. It's just really well shot, the, the, it has a lot of style to it, and overall this whole movie shot fairly well. Yeah, the CGI is to a T. They actually did a really good job with that compared to all the other movies I find. This is the best for the CGI. It's especially noticeable with the liquors. Now, that they look a lot better too in this movie, the creature designs. Now, this testing facility that Alice is captured in has a bunch of simulation rooms. The one for New York, one for Russia, you get the drill. and Like Moscow, I believe. And they unleash a bunch of clones in them and set off zombies to see how it would turn out in real life. One of these simulation rooms is Raccoon City itself and they actually place a clone Alice in there who's like a regular person not like a soldier and she's with Carlos and be her husband and she has a deaf daughter who uses signs. And I think this part of the movie is done very well. It It's a little confusing at first because you don't know if it's a dream or if it's really happening and it's a little bit of a ripoff of Dawn of the Dead, the remake, and the way it's uh, way it plays out. But it's still really cool just to see a regular zombie movie in this franchise. Up until you get to the part where they're hiding in the closet and the zombie opens its mouth with the stupid CGI mouth spreading open. And I hate that. That's what I hated about Afterlife and they, they just had to ruin that scene. And talking about the zombies, the zombies are pretty good for the most part, the regular ones. But there's this one scene I'll get into later in uh, the Moscow simulation, which I hate. Now this movie, for the most part, the cool parts are pretty much copying the original. the Having it underground, bringing back a lot of the characters from the first movie, uh, focusing a little bit more on the horror, but it's ultimately a, an action movie. I just feel it ultimately fails at that because we don't get the claustrophobic, uh, isolated atmosphere that we had in the first one, and it almost takes itself too seriously this time. We also got the Red Queen returning from the first movie, and now <laughs> she's in control of all Umbrella for some reason now, and she's gone homicidal on the whole world. But I feel like she is just repetitive, and they just shoved her in there because people liked her from the first movie. And that's it. Now let's talk about the characters in this movie. Starting with Alice, she still has no powers after the events of the afterlife. and But she acts like she does. She's still doing backflips and crazy spins and kicking uh, clips from guns in the air at people's heads. And it's like, she's acting like she's still got powers. She's a little less annoying than uh, the last movie too. And as these movies go on, I found she just got annoying to me. But this one's a little less, and I really like the clone version of her because she's just like a regular person. And I feel like if they would have done a zombie movie like that, more like the Dawn of the Dead remake, uh, she, she would have been a great final girl. 
Then we got Wesker, who was the the bad guy in the last few movies, just switching sides and trying to help o Alice, which is a little stupid, but he explains that it's because the, the queen's in charge now and she's homicidal and Alice is the only uh, chance they have against her and to save humanity. We also got his uh, head assassin, Ada, which I find is uh, done pretty well in this movie. She's okay. You got Wesker's rescue team coming in from the surface, through the ice, down to rescue Alice. They're all throwaway characters, essentially. You got Leon from the games. It's another game insert, just to say that they they put something from the game in, but really, the characters all have no depth. You get one returning character with uh, Luther, and he's really there for nothing either, just to say, hey, that guy was in Afterlife. It's just really a waste. None of them have character depths or any real storylines that make the movie any better and lastly we got the soldiers a crew of the soldiers from the original movie back as clones and they're they're uh, working for the Red Queen trying to kill or capture Alice which at this point they could have killed her a hundred times so pretty much you might as well just say they're trying to capture her and I don't even know why they really need her at this point it's like they want her to join Umbrella but knowing her she was against them from the get-go the soldiers include Carlos, which I don't know why he's there. He wasn't in the original movie, and, but he's sent in there just because it's someone Alice recognizes. You got the leader, you got uh, Rain, still the most badass character in this whole franchise and in this movie. She's barely in it, barely gets any screen time, but every time she does, it's it's the best. I still say she should have been the one who, who was the main character, not Alice. She's way more of a badass. And instead of Carlos, they could add in Spence or, Car or Capelin, like people who were actually in the first movie, but they only choose a couple. Now moving on to the action in this movie, I think it was done probably the best out of all the franchise too, even though I prefer the horror aspect, which they keep ignoring. But the the choreography, the, the stunt work, all that's done pretty well. I just hate that he has to slap slow-mo on everything and not just let it play out in real time. That's what I prefer. It, there's not super fast cuts, but it's all slow-mo. And that's what I was saying. For every good I have for this movie, there's a bad. There's great action scenes, but they're ruined with, or watered down with slow-mo. You do get this cool fight scene at the end with uh, Rain, Jill Valentine, Alice, Leon, and Luther. They're all battling it out, and it's pretty great, but slow-mo. But you get the x-ray punches where you can see bones breaking, almost like in Mortal Kombat, which I found was pretty clever. Finally, I kind of really dug the score in this one. It brought back like the electric vibes like the late 90s and early 2000s movie had, almost like Blade in them, which uh, which was refreshing in a 2012 movie. Now, getting into more of the flaws of this movie, one of the, the biggest ones, obviously, besides logic, is, is continuity and, yeah, logic. I know this is a schlocky uh, action horror franchise but come on they can't even get the storyline right from one movie to the other they always keep switching stuff or turning stuff and it bothers me so much like for instance the spider on Jill Valentine's chest when it gets taken off she remembers Alice right away almost and shoots her a gun and be like Alice when Claire had it on her she couldn't remember her brother the whole movie and still doesn't remember things at the end it's it's very inconsistent or things like Alice getting shot and she shows blood a few times and she, like, but then it acts like she's fine for a while. And another half hour she'll be like, oh. But ultimately it doesn't affect her because then she's fighting just as good as everybody else at the end, hand to hand combat. And she has no power, so she should be dead or at least crawling around. <laughs> like I said previously about Wesker switching sides and helping out Alice when he was the bad guy previous to this, it makes you think like, his excuse is the Red Queen's in charge and she doesn't care about human life, but who put her in charge? Someone did at Umbrella. So was it him? Was it like... To me, it's why would you put an artificial intelligence in charge of everything when you know he, she already went homicidal on the group in the hive? Like the logic is... Now I'll get back to what I was telling you about the zombies being bad. They were good for the most part until you go to the Moscow simulation and they all come out with these guns. And to me that ruins any type of atmosphere or spookiness that you're trying to create with those zombies. 
they're just essentially soldiers, dead soldiers coming back at you, and they're not going for your flesh or trying to eat you or nothing. They're just there to shoot you, and it's like, it's just stupid driving around on dirt bikes, and uh, I I really despise that part. And finally, this movie ends on another cliffhanger at the White House where Alistair receives back her powers from Wesker because he says he needs her to have them to fight with him, even if she's going to kill him in the end. And it shows the White House with zombies and monsters all around. And it's like, this is going to be a big battle in, in the States for the next movie, the biggest battle of them all. And then, as you know, the next movie starts and we don't get that. So while this movie has great concepts mixed with terrible ones... It makes for a really frustrating watch, but it's definitely a step up from Afterlife, in my opinion. I feel like a few more rewrites of this movie and uh, just a better execution of the story with uh, filling in a little more character depth here and there. This could have really been at least a pass for me, but it just misses the mark and gets a 5.5. It's a mixed bag for this guy, and that's it for this review. Let me know if you like this movie down below, or what's your favorite in the franchise. I'm going to be finishing off this franchise with the final chapter, coming soon, and then I will be ranking all of these movies best to worst. So be sure to stay tuned for that, and until next time, thanks for watching.